everyone. Welcome back to Forest School with me, Mrs Stafford. So thank you so much to all those children and parents who've watched the first video about birds and those that have sent in photographs and told me all the different things you've been up to. It's really, really nice to hear. So thank you very much. Um, so this last week, it's been quite cold, been quite frosty. And I've been out for some lovely winter walks. And so I've got a couple of pictures now and some video of you, for you to see of me being out in the winter weather. Also, we set up the wildlife camera last time to see if we could catch any birds going to our bird feeder. And I'll pop in now what we found. So we didn't find any birds that came to it, but my two cats, Smudge and Tabby, they did come along and they had a good sniff at it and saw, have a look, see what it was about. Um, but I think they scared the birds off. So maybe I need to put it in a position where they don't know where it is. <laughs> Today we're going to focus on when animals tend to come out and when you tend to see them. Now animals that are out in the day, like many of the birds that you can hear tweeting behind me, they come out in the daytime and they are known as diurnal. Okay, And then there are quite a few animals that come out just at night time and you might know what they are called, they are known as nocturnal. Okay, And so I want to see if we can play a little quiz on whether you know whether these animals are nocturnal or not. Okay, so my first one I have here is a squirrel. Make your guesses now. Is it nocturnal or not? You're right, squirrels, they come out in the daytime. So they are diurnal. They come out in the day. How about this one? A hedgehog. Is it nocturnal or not? That's it. Hedgehogs are nocturnal. So you often see hedgehogs scuttling around in the evening. If you see one in the daytime, then that often lets you know that that hedgehog isn't actually well. It's not well, that hedgehog. So hedgehogs you should see out at night time. How about this? A badger. Nocturnal or not? You're right. Badgers, they are nocturnal. They come out at night time as well. They often come out as soon as the sun sets and dusk comes, you'll see them all start coming out of their burrows. All right, how about this one? A robin. What do we think? Is it nocturnal or not? Right, a robin. We've seen those out many times at forest school. We have our own special forest school robin that often appears, especially when we're having biscuits. They are diurnal. They're out in the daytime. Fox. What do you think of fox? Is it nocturnal or not? Right, a fox is nocturnal. Again, they come out in the evening time and throughout the night and that's when they do most of their hunting. How about a mole? Is a mole nocturnal or not? Now moles, we often think of being nocturnal because often you'll wake up and you'll look out your garden and you'll find a huge mole hill that will have appeared overnight. We often think that they're out there burrowing overnight, but they're both. They often go in shifts, four hour shifts. They're on for four hours awake and then they had a nod, nod off for a few four hours or so. 
and then back again. So they will be active during the day and night. Okay, how about this one? It's an otter. What do you think about an otter? Is it nocturnal or not? An otter is generally nocturnal. They're most active during the night, but you will spot them out during the day. But often they're most active at night. And finally, an owl. This is a barn owl. Now, owls generally are nocturnal, but a barn owl is something else. A barn owl is something known as crepuscular. Now, crepuscular means when it is, they come out during dusk and dawn. So when it's dusk is when the sun is setting and dawn is when the sun is coming up for the day. This is when barn owls are most active and that is known as crepuscular. So we've learned three words there. We've got nocturnal, when they come out at night time, diurnal, when they come out in the day, and crepuscular, when they come out when it's dusk or dawn, when the sun is setting or rising. Well done. And here I have a poster from the Wildlife Trust of animals that generally are nocturnal. And as it said, they're owls, badgers, foxes, often deer, bats especially are nocturnal. Got a wood mouse there, hedgehog. These are all animals that are nocturnal. Now we showed the owls there that are often nocturnal, but I said about the barn owl that comes out at dusk and dawn, so it's crepuscular. There are a few different types of owl. We have the barn owl. We have the tawny owl. We have the long-eared owl. And we have the short-eared owl. And then lastly, and probably most noisily, we have the little owl. Okay, now I have a craft for you to today, do today, which is relating to the owl. I want to see if you can make your own owls. And in order to do that, you're going to need some clay. Now, if you don't have clay, like me, I've got some nice brown clay here, then you could use Play-Doh or plasticine, or if you've got some polymer clay here, okay, that you can use to make your, your clay owl. You'll also need a little rolling pin if you have one, or even a stick to roll it out a little bit. And then finally, you will need um, a pen with a pen lid that has kind of a nice pattern on it. There you might see that we can use to make some feathers on top. So what you're going to do first is you're going to take your clay and you're going to roll it into a ball between your palms of your hands as best as you can. There we are. So I've made myself a nice round ball. Okay, I'm going to press it down a bit so it makes a bit of a circle shape like this. I'm going to use my little rolling pin to see if I can roll it out into a circle. I'm turning it quarter way round. I'm going to roll that a bit more. Coming up. Like that. And once more. There we go. Now once you've got it in your circle shape, like this, okay, you're going to roll it out, lay it out flat, and then you're going to make a pattern in the lower bottom half of it. So the lower bottom area, I'm going to do that now, and I'll show you. I'm going to use my end of my pen, overlap it to see if I can make it look like feathers. All the way at the bottom. I've done that in the bottom part in the middle. <laughs> Tabby's going to say hi again. And then I'm going to fold in the sides. So I'm going to fold in one side, which is going to be a wing. I'm going to fold in my other side, which is going to be the other wing. So it looks like this. 
and then Dabby, <laughs> I'm going to fold in the top part and bend that down. And it creates a shape that sort of looks like that little parcel. Now with this, I can now pinch the tops to make it look like the ears. <laughs> and then I can pinch a little bit down here at the middle to make it look like the beak of my owl. Can you see? Smooth that bit off a bit. I'm going to pop some eyes. I'm going to use a stick that's just here. I'm going to do some, put some eyes in. Make my beak more. I'm going to use a stick to see if I can just do some sweeping feathers along my wings. There we go. Here's my little owl. I'm sure you can make a better job than me. But have a go. Now we've done our owl, I think we're going to need a nest to put our owl in. I'm going to show you a couple of images of some nests now. It's a bit hard to see with the light, but these are lots of different types of nests that you might find. Oh, this one's up the wrong way. And then this one made out of straw with some tiny eggs in. Let's see if we can get do a nest challenge of you building your own. I'm going to show you a real one I have here up close. That's in this box to show you how intricately they are made. So this one is made with straw, and different hay and grass. You can see there's lots of mud here that's hard, that's holding it together. There's also moss around the back that's dried. You can see again that it's bound together with lots of mud and sticks and straw and grasses with a nice hollow inside there. Okay, I want to see, set you a challenge of seeing if you can make your own nest. Okay, and so what I want you to do is try and make a nest using sticks and twigs, and maybe some hay or straw that you might find, try and make it nice and soft in the middle. See if you can perch up in one of the trees or one of the nooks of the branches and build it in there and see if you can get it to be able to put an egg in. I've just got this from Crystal this morning who laid it and see if you can pop your egg in there and if you shake the tree as if the wind is blowing the nest will stay. So I'm going to see if I can build one now. Okay here we go I've made my nest I'm going to test it out now to see if it actually stays here with my chicken's egg in. So I'm going to give it a shake as if the wind is blowing. Ooh, so far so good. I think that's fairly good. Have yourself a go and see if you can try and do it. If you want to make it more of a challenge then try just using one hand because remember that birds do this with just their beaks. They haven't got hands so see if you can just do it with one hand if you want to set yourself a bit more of a challenge. Okay, I'm going to finish off today by setting up our wildlife camera again. This time I'm going to set it up more in the corner there on the ground to see if I can see anything coming along on the ground level. Hopefully I'll leave it out over a couple of nights and see if we can see any nocturnal animals that might come through the behind our little hedgerow here and go through the gate. Okay, so I'm going to pop that up there now. And then finally, I'm going to finish off by reading you a story that is called Bouncing Blackbird. Okay, and the story there, who it's by. This is Bouncing Blackbird, produced by the RSPB. Somewhere in the garden, hopping on the ground, a bouncing little blackbird stopped and looked around. I am feeling hungry. I want something to eat, so all I have to do is find a tasty treat. He hopped and stopped and hopped again, turning his black head, saw a worm, gave a tug, swallowed it and said, when I'm feeling hungry, worms are what I eat, and this is what I do when I find a tasty treat. Then he spied another bird hopping on the path. 
It was Cheeky Sparrow, and Bouncing Blackbird asked, When you're feeling hungry, what do you like to eat? And what do you do, then, to find a tasty treat? Ah, said the sparrow, I eat anything I do. Seeds and nuts and berries, and sometimes insects too. And when I'm feeling hungry, that is what I eat. There are lots of places to find a tasty treat. Bird tables, feeders, and the ground have all that we need. Eating with my sparrow mates, we like lots of seeds. When I'm feeling hungry, there's not much I won't eat. I don't have to try hard to find a tasty treat. So oft hopped bouncing blackbird until by and by he asked busy blue tit who was sitting way up high. When you're feeling hungry, what do you like to eat? And what do you do then to find a tasty treat? Well, said busy blue tit, I'm a climber, it is true. I eat the bugs and seeds that, that are out of reach for you. When I'm feeling hungry, that is what I eat. And this is what I do to find a tasty treat. Unlike you, I don't feel safe eating on the ground. I like it best way up high, hanging upside down. And when I'm feeling hungry, seeds are what I eat. And this is what I do to find a tasty treat. Bouncing Blackbird said, thank you. And then he hopped away and came across a robin. Hello, he said, good day. When you're feeling hungry, what do you like to eat? And what do you do then to find a tasty treat? Well, said Robin, thinking, insects are fine by me, but if I can't find those, it's berries then for tea. And when I'm feeling hungry, that is what I eat, and this is what I do to find a tasty treat. I find a place high up where I can sit and search, and when I spy a bug, I swoop down from my perch. When I'm feeling hungry, that is how I eat, and that is what I do to find a tasty treat. Well, said Bouncing Blackbird, with all this talk of food, I'm getting rather peckish, and I don't wish to be rude. But now I'm feeling hungry, I need something to eat. So off he hopped across the grass to find a tasty treat. Thanks so much for watching again. Um, I look forward to seeing what you get up to and seeing if you can build a nest or make an owl out of clay. And then if you can, go out for an evening walk later on after about five o'clock and see what animals you can spot that are coming out at night time. Okay, see you next time. Bye.